Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Government Operations Committee <coughs> to order with the time being 7-10. Um, can I please have roll call? Here. Folks? Bonagard? Here. Munns? Here. Bancroft? Lencioni? Here. Petrola? Here. Werbaum? Here. Besner? Here. Uh, first up, um, administrative only, the video gaming statistics. Once again, that's for information only. Um, next up, we have the, uh, I'm looking for a motion, a second for the omnibus for item 5B and 7A. So moved. Moved by second. Werbel, seconded by Petrillo. Uh, roll call, please. Sokitis? Yes. Bongard? Yes. Munns? Yes. Monsioni? Yes. Petrillo? Yes. Werbel? Yes. Besser? Yes. All right, that motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, 5A, we're going to move to the end of the, the agenda. So next up, we'll, we will have, I'm sorry, 5, yeah, 5A. Next up, we have 6A. Um, it's going to be presented by Heather. Good evening. Before I introduce the item, I know that the mayor is going to make a couple opening comments regarding the creation of an equity and inclusion commission. Yes, I think um, for many of you, this isn't a secret. That is something that I've wanted to develop since the beginning of my term here. Um, I will say that it also came up in strategic planning and that even in communications that I've received from many high schoolers um, asking about when and if there will be a commission of the sort. So that's kind of what preempted this for us, and I'm excited that we're finally bringing it forward. So thank you, City Manager Chair. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just make a couple brief opening comments. We do have Lisa Stricker here joining us from GovHR who specializes in this type of work, so she is going to go over some of the parameters and goals of the creation of the commission, but I just wanted to make a few opening comments first. In addition to the executive summary you have in your packet, I did want to emphasize that um, equity and inclusion was a strong focal point of our 2023 strategic plan. It became both a guiding principle as well as one of our strategic goals for that 2023 strategic plan. There were two different components of the creation of an equity and inclusion commission. There was an internal piece as well as an external piece. In the fall, we embarked upon an assessment for the internal component of that that was wrapped up and distributed to staff and elected officials in February of this year. If anybody would like to see a copy of that, I'm happy to resend that out as well. But that will continue going through. Uh, Lisa is also guiding us on that with the assistance of our Human Resources Director, Jen McMahon, as well as several staff members as we form that internal committee. In addition to that, the next component was the external commission. So this is why we are before City Council this evening. Again, as this was a strategic, strategic priority from our strategic plan, we are looking to create an external commission with members that would represent the community as a whole and guide us on several key items as we look to make this a more inclusive community. So with that, I will turn this over to Lisa Stricker from the HR. Thank Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And I'm going to first off thank you for calling me up and wanting to do this work. I understand that there's a lot, and this is a two-part process, but the fact that you wanted to and are even bringing this forward takes courage, takes a lot of, you know, wherewithal. So I really appreciate the opportunity to present here for you today. So what... What are we, oh, some, um, before we get started in equity and inclusion, I want to just get a baseline understanding of what these terms mean, because they mean a lot to a lot of people. So let's talk about first equity and how that's a little bit different from equality, okay? So people talk about equality, and equality is that whole, if I do this for one, I have to do it for someone else. A lot of us are brought up with that, and I know I was. If I do it for you, I have to do it for you. Where equitability is a little bit different. Equitability is, in a nutshell, assigning resources based on need. We use equitability all the time, but we really don't think about it. So one of the places where it shows itself that I like to speak to is an emergency room. Imagine two people are going to an emergency room, both complaining of a headache. Turns out one of them, with their original onset, has actually a hangover. They really didn't know how to handle what they were doing the night before. Whereas the next one actually may have had a brain cancer. Equality would say that we will give them both aspirin and send them home. What I do for one, I do for the other. But we know that's really not what happens. Equitability says that the one that has a hangover, yes, we'll give them IV fluids, we'll give them an aspirin, we'll send them home. However, the one that may have the brain tumor, what we're going to do there, we're going to give them a little bit more attention. We're going to give them a consult. We're going to have more doctors come and see them. They're going to need more tests. 
Did they get the same treatment? No. Did they get equal treatment? No. But did they get the treatment based on what they walked in the door with? Yes. Were they able to see that this person might need a little bit more help and then provide that help? Yes. So did we spend more money? Are they spending more money on that person that has a brain tumor? Absolutely. Not necessarily with the person with the hangover. That's really the essence of equitability. Inclusion is, I'll give you an example. I like, I'm a storyteller. Take yourself back to middle school. Let's all go back there to that off, that seventh grade moment where you're walking into a cafeteria for the first time and then you realize that your best friend is in a different launch period and you don't know anybody and you're walking in with your tray in your hand, looking around, going, where do I sit? Do I sit with the athletes? Do I sit with the popular kids? Where do I go? Inclusion says that everybody in that cafeteria is seeing me with my tray, looks up to me because I have my head down, and they go, no, 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 come here, come here, it's safe. Hey, you, new person, hey, you, person that doesn't know anybody, I know nothing about you, but you have a safe place to land. We'll get to know you before we judge you. We are going to sit here, you are safe here. That is inclusion. Those are the two things that we're working on with this commission. It will be equity and inclusion. You'll notice people say DEI, they talk about diversity. Diversity is simply the fact that people are different. It's a fact. It is simply that if you have two people in a room, those two people are different, so then you have diversity. You can't teach that. You can't train that. But what you can do is make those differences be included. So that brings that inclusivity back. But I don't, we don't really talk about diversity in this kind of work. And it's really, as you look around and as these commissions are being formed all across the country, it's really equity and inclusion commissions, the diversity is sort of not being spoken of as much because, again, it's simply a fact. There's nothing that you can really do about diversity other than measure it. There's no really difference with that. Another word that's out there is belonging. And you're like, well, what about the B? What about belonging? Why isn't it a belonging commission? Belonging is really not something that we can control. I can't control how you feel. I wish I could. I wish I wanted everybody to like me. But in reality, belonging is something that if you do inclusive work properly, then your belonging is great. People will feel like they belong. But because, again, we don't know what people walk in the door with, then they might, no matter how great we are, just not want to be here. They just might never feel like they fit in through no fault of anyone here, no fault of anybody in this room. So because of that, we don't talk about the belonging. So that is why when we talk about this commission, it is the Equity and Inclusion Commission. But why do we need a commission? Like, okay, this is all great, but why do we need one? If it's all, The why is because we are all in a position to make meaningful change in the community, in the community in which we serve, right? But we don't want to make these decisions in a vacuum. We want to give the opportunity for people with different perspectives, different ways of being, different ways of thinking to come in and have their voice be heard too. Because I don't think there's anyone here or anyone in this room actually that would intentionally leave anyone out. I don't think that's just at the core of what I believe. I don't think anybody intentionally does that. But what happens is there's nobody at the table to say, hey, did you think about this? Oh, my God, that's a good idea. Then as we're doing things, as we're creating policy, as we're doing things, there's somebody else who can raise their hand who might have a little more knowledge about it. So we're doing it to make more informed decisions, more informed policies, with the feeling, once again, that we're being inclusive of people with different backgrounds. We're also doing it because we want to amplify those voices of people who might otherwise not be heard. So if we don't have this commission, we start this, let's go through neurodiversity, introvert, extrovert. They might not want to come up and say, hey, what about this? We're giving them the opportunity to have that extra voice to be able to say, I have a thought here. I might want to do this. This might affect me in a way that perhaps you're not aware of. It's just another way to bring some people in and make them feel included, as we all want. And ultimately, we all want everybody who lives here, works here, visits here, to feel safe that they have a nice place to land. Again, going back to that tray. You want to be, no matter where I go, I want to walk in and be like, hey, I'm good here. I'm okay here. And the way you do that is by you're getting all these different voices. Also, they have the opportunity to say, yeah, I'm on this commission. I do this. They're trying. It's, good. it's a journey. We're not going to do it all today. But at least they're trying and they understand. So that's why this work is important. And that's why, again, I applaud you for 
taking that step to think toward doing it. So, okay, great. What's next? Like, what do we do now? So what's next is member selection. We want nine people on the commission. A good, nice, round, odd number. But why nine? Because we want to have enough people, again, so we can get as much diversity on that uh, on the commission. And by diversity, we mean age. We mean neurodiversity. We mean um, race. We mean religion. We mean everything that that can round up. So we put it out, and we have everybody coming in. So now we've got to talk to people, see where they fit in, and make sure, again, that this commission is for them and that we're able to move forward in that way. We're working with the city manager. We're going to talk to everybody. We're going to get this group in. I'm sitting in the shadow. What I'm saying she will be sitting there as a part of it, as an onboarding member. And what that does is it seamlessly takes the work that we're doing internally, external. So then we've got both of those sitting together. Next is training. Simply because you are a member of a group doesn't mean that this work is you're ready to do the work, right? So just because I sit here in the skin that I'm in doesn't make me an expert. It just means that I have a different perspective. So what I want to do is I want to come in and train and say, hey, this is what intersectionality is. You could be multiple things. And here's how we're going to prioritize what we want to look at because it's such a big topic. We want to make sure that we're prioritizing properly based on what we're hearing, based on what we're feeling, and based on what we're seeing in the area. We want to make sure that we're making educated, informed decisions and recommendations for you instead of knee-jerk reactions to something that we saw somewhere else. So it's training how to do that work and how to make it effective <clears throat> as opposed to, you know, just go and let's do tactics before we figure out strategically what makes sense. And then we're going to create a plan, right? So it's not just let's create a commission and let them go off. It's training them on how to make a six-month strategic plan on what they will do so that when they come back and they're important on what they're doing, it makes sense and there's real movement as opposed to putting people in a room and I've seen it go lots of ways. So it's much better to have them have a plan that they can report, that they can come back and say, this is, we are successful because we've done these things, and, and then grow it, and then make it what it needs to be. So that's what's next. So now, questions. Okay, I'll open up the questions. Go ahead, <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is for you or staff, but um, the number of members is nine. It said three are going to come from outside the city of St. Charles, so non-residents. What are the parameters for that? Is it King County? Is it uh, the township? Is yeah, the, the, the greater St. Charles area, we will mirror it exactly like our um, oh, the, is it youth commission. I'm sorry. Youth commission? Okay. Yeah, set up the exact same way, so it'll be the same parameters. Fair enough. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions? Go ahead, David. The plan you, you mentioned, does the council have to approve that, or is that just approved by the committee or commission itself <clears throat> adopted? <laughs> Yeah, we can do it either way. I think um, especially because we are investing in the training of these memberships uh, mm -hmm. or this group, I would prefer that, that plan to be guided by them rather than mm -hmm. the city council who's not necessarily trained in that doing it. So it's basing the recommendation on their, their mm -hmm. plan and their vote. Go ahead, Paul. I love how this sounds. I love hearing about the things that I don't know, you know, and, and, and it sounds like a bunch of great communication and new ideas. But in, in a... Um, Say they're going to come up with plans. What types of things in communi communities, like what, what should I expect? What are, I expect that there's a lot of um, commissions like this that have been put together. What kinds of things have they done? Like, uh, like what will it end up being? Guess, or what, what great can, things have you seen other places? I can answer And positive that. benefits. Yeah, Thank I can you. do that. Because um, I don't want to be one to say what they will do. Because yeah. Right, right, right. It, things such as... Uh, working with high schoolers to get them understanding how government works and getting that youth. So you, there's ageism. So we have, we have lots of programs where we have people that are in high school working with people that are retired and putting them together so that they're doing things together as ageism. In terms of different religious holidays, for, for example, you could have, and I don't know this, but there's examples where they will come in and say, oh, we didn't know that this was a specific holiday, so perhaps we don't want to hold a meeting on that day. So they created a calendar that say these are the important 
days in which you might or might not want to do certain things in the city. It's not really creating a holiday, but it's just saying, hey, be aware that these things are happening. It is um, understanding the differences where gender is concerned, meaning if you have someone coming in who is used to saying certain things in a certain way, giving people language that helps them to understand how to properly navigate the world that we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. So it could be something like if you see, example, he, she, right? It's like, oh, he, she, I'm supposed to say whatever. So I always say, just use the person's name. Let's not use he, she, let's not use, because that puts the male gender first, right? As opposed to anything else, and you have to alternate it. So things of that nature. In the first 12 months, we're not looking to do anything that would be jarring because we're getting our feet wet and we're changing. It's, it's as we're getting more and more into it that anything. And let me ask that question. As I, you know, and I appreciate this opportunity to kind of get the, the wheels turning, but it, it occurs to me anybody who felt like they were not having the full opportunity for inclusion, they finally have a place to go, too. Yeah. So, okay, right on. Thank you very much. You're I think welcome. I am starting to understand. And without getting into too many details of that, Alder Person Lencioni, that is starting to come up more and more at some of the external committees and commissions I'm <clears> attending. <throat> that kind of frustration, I don't know if you can say frustration maybe, but that, that sentiment is brewing a little bit, that where do we go? How do People we talk that about that this? Let's start this conversation. I feel great about that. Thank you. Go ahead, Brian. Um, under the ordinance, I just have a question maybe for Heather here. It says um, you're going to look for a, a diverse group of, of individuals to serve, and it says preferably with at least one youth position, 18 years or younger. Will they need permission from their parents to uh, – to, to serve, how, how would that work? Go ahead. <laughs> Specifically because they're 18, we wouldn't, um, we, if they're 18, then no, if they're under 18, we would like to have parental consent because I we're see. doing okay. something outside. Okay, of. thank you. And it would really be an advisory capacity, so we're going to work with the high school. We did not actually have any applicants that were in that age group, so we are going to continue outreach for that specific membership. Just okay. because we want to make sure that we are getting a, a full and, and diverse perspective. <clears throat> What would be the time frame of, uh, of appointments? Ideally, if this commission was approved at the next city council meeting, following that creation, <clears throat> we would be bringing the applicants forward at that next government operations Order. committee meeting for uh, council to meet those members. Okay. And, and then um, it says meetings shall meet at least, at least four times per year. When would be the time frame for them after they have X number of meetings? Is it six months after the group convenes at it would come back and make recommendations, or how does that process look? i got to pull the ordinance again. I think we had a, a recommendation in there for when they would come back to city council to update them. Okay. Okay. Steve? Yeah, let's wait for it. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> Add a quarterly update. Okay. That way. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that was in here. Yeah. Action. Yep. You know. Jamie, you had a question. Yeah, I was just curious if you have examples of other communities in which you've instituted either boards or commissions like this, or if you can tell us where we would see some other examples like this. Are you talking specifically with that we work with Lisa has done? Either either her organization or similar organizations. Yeah, Geneva does have a task force that they've initiated as well. They don't call it a commission; they call it a task force. But it is locally occurring as okay. well. So I I'm currently right now working with an. Uh, it's not local, but I'm working with a uh, Concord, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. Because okay. I, I went into my Boston accent for a moment. Right outside of Boston. Um, to create mm -hmm. theirs and to launch theirs, and we're, they've now launched it, and now we're into the year one implementation planning phase with them. So okay. Super excited. 
Okay. The thing that I will say is, is I'm attending professional development seminars and I'm very engaged with ILCMA, which is the Illinois City County Managers Association, as well as the national. This is uh, it's a topic on everybody's radar right now, but I think a lot of communities are in the initial phases of this. I think we've got a little bit of a leg up having conducted the assessment phase already, which was a really important part of this from the internal perspective, but everybody is embarking on this initiative kind of simultaneously. Thank you. Ryan, go ahead. So do you have some ideas of what success looks like? I know we're starting out, a lot of communities are, are getting involved in this, but surely, you know, six months, two years, four years, what, is, what does a, a win look like this, look for in this area? So you can, because it's, it's a hard area to, to, to go and say, this has worked, or gosh, we could be better over here. You know, if you're looking at youth commission or housing commission or, you know, ZBA, but in this particular area, what are other communities talking about? What does is, what is success look like? What other communities have done, and I'm, and I'm not proposing or saying that this is what you should do here, is they start with a baseline report or a baseline summary, I mean a survey. So they look at what the where the town is now, then they repeat the exact same summary one year later, and they look for these numbers to increase year over year. And there are specific questions that are asked about how inclusive the, the city is and how um, equitable they feel that things have been handled. As you do that, you want that well-being number to, to tick up. That's a quantifiable way to measure. Go ahead, Ron. Thank you for your, pre thank you for your presentation. How many like cities and towns around here are doing this kind of program? That I can't answer off the top of my head. Yeah, Geneva for sure has started it. Okay. Like I said, I, I, we're still sort of in this um, very cursory point where people oh, are understand. starting to engage. I'm just curious. So Geneva has had their task force, so, I think, for over a year at this point. So, so we're pretty new to this in this area? Right. I mean, we're starting the process? I, I would say so. This is, okay. this is just becoming a thing that everybody is starting to tackle. Well, okay. oh, good. Glad we're doing it. Thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead, David. Uh, for, more for Heather. Uh, what, I'm just curious, what type of response have we received from applicants? Do we? Um, an excellent response, actually. Mm -hmm. We've gotten several people with a very broad range of backgrounds, um, faith-based, gender-based. Um, it, it's it's been across the gamut, so I'm I'm very happy. I don't know if you want to speak on that too I, as well, but just it, it was very. It was very positive to see so many people that were interested in helping the community and had all these perspectives that um, I think will be very beneficial on this commission. And I just want to add that the letters that came with them were moving. I've done these before, and sometimes you're sort of like pulling teeth to get people involved. Here, that was not the case, and people were very forthcoming with their stories about why they want to be included and why <clears throat> they're appreciative that, that you're doing this sort of work. So. And if I can also add on to that, I think the, the letters were also positive in nature about people wanting to contribute mm -hmm. and wanting to make maybe what we have even better as opposed to I had this negative experience and this is why I want to participate mm -hmm. in this. It was more that positive forward direction. So more proactive, not necessarily yeah. reactive. Okay, cool. Thanks. Go ahead. Ed. Then going back to uh, Alderperson Bongard's uh, question, um, would this tie into yearly our satisfaction survey then? Uh, that we send out to all the residents of St. Charles? We certainly could make it a component yeah. of that. Um, this is probably going to be a pretty large scale type of survey that we would want to conduct. It may make more sense to keep this within this commission. Yeah. But we can we can think about ways to incorporate that or at least guide people to that commission. Yeah, I guess I, I, I said that wrong. I'm not trying to say intentionally do that, but yeah. we do a survey every year, so uh, do you think that would show up, I guess, eventually if we had this commission rolling? I, I think it certainly could, but we may want to get a little bit um, deeper in that yeah. level and then get a little bit more into the fine details of it with the commission. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, David. Sorry, this made me think. Lisa, right? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> would your um, I forgot your name here for a second. Uh, would your Would you help us, uh, the commission, form the questions, or you know, yes. to okay? Um, surveys have to be asked a certain way. Right, scientific and right, right. statistically significant. There's all the things that goes with making a survey. We're not going to simply do a survey monkey and put it out right, there. Right, right. Okay. That would invalidate <laughs> the entire. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I've personally had some experience with surveys, and they have, yeah, they have to be done in the right way. Same question, so. three different ways. Right. And, and I think in the same regards to the survey, <clears throat> why training is going to be such an important component of this commission. Again, we're embarking on this new. Everybody is starting to tackle this initiative, and it's really important that we task these members with being trained and being a resource 
for us as staff and for the city council as well for these types of issues that we want to address and discuss. Um, I have a question. As uh, an executive of a company that has almost 700 employees, we deal with manufacturing, retail, marketing, sales, management. So uh, equity and inclusion is obviously something that as a company um, we discuss all the time and it, and it is very important because we're covering such a wide spectrum um, of people that work for us. Um, the, I like the spirit of, of everything in this document. There's, there's one thing under responsibilities that, um, that I, I don't know if it fits into what we're trying to achieve here under responsibilities. It's, it's number, the number five. It's uh, providing observations and identifying areas of systemic racism in St. Charles and developing recommendations of steps to be taken as individuals, organizations, and as a community to combat racism and embrace greater diversity in those areas. I think holistically, you know, equity and inclusion, that is included in, in all that. I, I just that, that language of number five, um, to me, just kind of jumps out a little bit. And, and the reason, I'll tell you the reason why it's there. Oftentimes when people hear the phrase systematic racism, it gives you sort of a, a, a knee-jerk reaction to that. But in essence, there are certain things that because your people are ingrained in it, they just don't see things that are there. And I can give you example after example of things that have people thought about it or seen it, they're like, oh, yeah, that's systemic, that's why it's happening, and it's happened over and over again. That being said, as we're starting, we can change. That is such a nuance. If it's bothering you, I'm happy to have it removed. But I wanted you to understand that the reason for it being there was to not let things that are sort of the foundation of systemic things that are happening be lost. Mm -hmm. Because they, they might, it, sometimes things become wallpaper and you don't see them anymore. And if you've been doing something the same way over and over and over again, that's when it becomes systemic and you don't realize it. So if it's the word racism, we can remove that. We can just say systemic problem, systemic you know, non-inclusive activities or something like that, but keeping the word that it's, it's been there, it's, it's ingrained so much so, even though it might not be intentional, it is there and we, somebody needs to raise their hand, hey, did you know that this is a problem? Even though you do it all the time, this is an issue. Sure. Okay, so we, we could maybe change we, some of the language a little bit absolutely. then? Absolutely. Okay. We're comfortable leaving it as long as we adjust that, maybe to say one of Lisa's recommendations. Yes. Sure. Any other questions up here? No? Okay, so I'm looking for a, a motion in a second to move this along. Move for approval. So moved by Warlock. Second. Seconded by Petrilla. Uh, roll call, please. Sukaitis? Yes. Bongard? Yes. Munz? Yes. Lencioni? Yes. Petrilla? Yes. Warball? Yes. Besner? Yes. All right, motion here. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Heather. Okay, next up, um, we're going to have to go into um, executive. So I have this next discussion, so I need a motion and, exec and a second to go into executive session. So move. Moved by Lencioni, seconded by second. uh, Bessner. Larry, if you can just give us a second here. Sure. Yeah.